Our Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before Thee to thank You for all the many blessings that You've given us. We're thankful for this beautiful day that You've allowed us to live and for this wonderful opportunity that we have to gather together with our brothers and sisters and friends to study Thy Word, to be instructed by Thy Word, to be strengthened by Thy Word, and to know all the wonderful things that You have in store for mankind. And we pray, to dear Heavenly Father, that as we meditate over your word today that we will let it sink deep into our hearts to help to transform us into more Christ-like individuals so that we can live our lives after the example of your son and manifest your wonderful characteristics, the love and the joy and the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, all of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. We pray that we will truly be able to manifest these things to this world in darkness so they might see your glorious light. So dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you will Open our hearts and our minds as we study today that by gathering together with one another, we will strengthen each other up and motivate each other to realize what is truly important in our lives. We pray that you will comfort those that are, that are hurting today and that you will strengthen them and realize that you will be with them and never forsake them. And we pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, David. All right. So we're going to... Um, uh, finish up with Noah. I never knew how much there was about what could be talked about Noah other than the building of the ark until I, I got my head into this. Um, but last week we started looking um, at what it says about Noah in Hebrews 11.7, uh, where it says, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness of faith. And uh, we talked about, we have three components here that are not mentioned in Genesis, which makes the story bigger and richer than just this building of the ark and it kept them alive and they continued on after. And uh, last week, uh, well, they are that uh, he moved with fear, condemned the world and became an heir. And so it's an, um, extremely important that we come to know Noah through this verse better. Um, Genesis records the events of that day, but Hebrews gives us the character and the hope of the man. And that's what I really took away from this myself that I had never taken away before. And without spending a lot of time on it, uh, of course, we talked about moving with fear, which, of course, was understanding in a reverent kind of way. Um, the fear is a, uh, was a perception of something with understanding and reverence. And Noah had a good understanding. We don't know what all he knew. Uh, it's not recorded. He just comes onto the scene. He's given this commission and he builds the boat and he obeys to the, to the letter. But there's a whole lot more going on in his life than is recorded. And we only get a hint of that in Hebrews. And a lot of it is speculation as to what his, the conditions were under that he came up in. But we, were, we read in, in Proverbs about the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And that's what he had, that fear uh, of the Lord so that he would live and escape death. Um, and we also looked at, at um, uh, Psalm 34, 16. We're not going to look them all up. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And this was the world that Noah lived in. Um, and, and in Psalm 34, 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. And I would suggest possibly that Noah had talked about the violence in the world to the Lord and maybe feared for his own life, but we don't know. It doesn't say um, that he was ever threatened, but uh, we, we don't know. But if you live in a, a world that's filled with violence, there's always a danger. And then it talked about, we talked about how he would have condemned the world because it never says that he verbally said anything against the world around him. But it says that he condemned the world. And we look at that, that his actions were saying by building this boat that God is going to destroy this world. And I'm building this ark because he's offered a way of, of salvation through it. 
You can come or you can stay and perish with this world. And of course, we can only imagine the many conversations that took place in the uh, different households and all about old man Noah out there building his ark for decades, you know, and uh, the many things that he would have had to listen to and heard. But we also looked at how the men of Nineveh uh, examples would rise in judgment against that gener their generation because they repented. And also that the queen of the south would rise in judgment and condemn the, the present generation that Christ was living in because they wanted to hear the wisdom of Solomon. So uh, it's all in action. Action is how you condemn. You don't have to say a word, but if you, but if you obey God, um, that, that condemnation comes upon them and many will become ashamed of that. So. If nobody had anything to add to that that came up during the week in their thoughts, we'll move on with um, the third component of his faith that came out of it. And that's that um, he became an, an uh, became heir of righteousness, which is by faith. So an heir of righteousness. Um, what did he become an heir of? Uh, a lot of times we don't think about no, we think about seeing Noah in the kingdom, but we don't think about a lot of the, the, the building blocks around it, I guess you would say. Um, let's go to Romans 4.13. And this phrase is applied to someone else that we know very well. And uh, Debbie, you're first on my screen here. Uh, Romans 4.13. And we see the class of people that Noah is put into. Okay, Romans 4.13, for the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Okay, there's the exact, almost exact same wording that's mentioned about Noah. And a lot of times we, we, we hear the, this phrase about with Abraham, who we're going to hopefully get to today. Um, and we just think about Abraham, but Noah had the same words applied to him. And that was sort of, I hadn't really thought about it until you get into Hebrews and you see that this isn't a, a phraseology that is unique to Abraham alone. Noah is in that same classification um, as him, but does that put them in some kind of realm that we can only think I'll never reach it or can we apply it to ourselves? Uh, I would say that we can apply it to ourselves. Um, these, these men were, I used the word early on in the class, they were high profile stories, stories that they were so big and the, the, the realm that they lived in in that day, especially when it comes to destroying the earth with a flood, that we can't help but have them in the forefront of the stories that we tell. But we all have our own stories that are going down these paths of, of faith and difficulties and trials. And we are not unable to be where they are. If we think we, we can't reach it, then we've missed the beauty of the scriptures that these things were written for our learning. Not They weren't written to see what you can't do or what you can't be, but what you can be. There's a big difference in that. Uh, that you can actually be in the same classification as people. And we know that uh, if we look at Galatians 3, 28 and 29, uh, let's see, um, uh, David, I think you're next. Galatians 3, 28 and 29. Yes. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. There we are. We are in the same place as Abraham and Noah, uh, that, that through baptism we become an heir to whatever they were going to be given, to whatever they, they worked and suffered through and, and the difficulties they had. 
we are not so far down, let's say, the, the spiritual ladder that we can't walk in, this, in the same place as they walk. They, they just had big things for God's plan and history and the situation around them. God needed to have certain people set up who really told the story of what God can do. Now, he doesn't have us all build arcs or leave our country and, and uh, wander in the wilderness and things like that. But we have our own journeys that are individual. And that's what this is about. The men, the, this faith chapter is about what, how our lives can also uh, be in the same uh, classification. Also, let's look at Matthew 5, 6. Uh, Brian, you're next. Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. All right, this, this is the Beatitudes. Something we know so well, many of us as, as children are taught the Beatitudes to repeat them. Do we really think about the depth of that? To be hunger and thirst after righteousness and to be filled is to be in the same place as Noah and Abraham and the others that we have read about. It's not a, a lesser degree. It's not a, a lesser position. It's the same position for we're all one in Christ Jesus. There's no hierarchy in Christ, none at all. Um, so to say, I could never do what they do. Well, you can do what you can do in your life. Whatever God requires of you is what you can do. And he just required of Noah this situation. He required of Abraham this situation, but he's going to require of you whatever situation you're in. And it doesn't make you any less a brother or sister or a position in the kingdom of God. In the same chapter, let's go down uh, a little more. Uh, okay, Valerie, I think you're sitting next to Brian, so you're next. Uh, Matthew 5.10. Sorry, can you say it again? Matthew 5.10, same chapter. Um, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right to the kingdom of heaven and earth. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's the same exact thing that they were offered. No difference. Uh, and ne neither one of them were told that they would sit in some high position or anything like that. Um, but we will know them well when we get there. They will be old friends and when we get there. And we look forward to meeting them, but it's the same. Now I'm going to jump a, a couple of verses ahead because this verse in Hebrews is sort of the hub to me, of the chapter, Hebrews eleven thirteen. I couldn't wait to get to it to try to say the things I wanted to say this morning. But Hebrews eleven thirteen says, and we know it so well, that these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. The reason I say it's a hub, because we're reading about five or six people here, and then he says this, but then we, we read about a whole bunch of people more. So it's sort of a verse right in the middle of all these stories, where you might think it would normally go at the end once you've listed mm -hmm. everybody. Um, did somebody say something? Yeah, oh, okay. Somebody's phone was vibrating. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but it's kind of stuck here in the middle, and I because of the stories that we're talking about, I became uh, uh, interested in this word persuaded. I hadn't thought about it a whole lot other than that they just did what they were told to do because they believed they were supposed to do. Um, but Noah understood enough of that reward by whatever God had revealed him in that day. And he was persuaded to do what he did. Now, we don't know how much he, he knew. We don't know um, the, the depth of the knowledge of the future or anything pertaining to Christ other than what we know what happened in the Garden of Eden, what had been written down and washed away with the flood. We don't know. Um, 
But whatever Noah had learned in the first 500 years of his life, which is more than five lifetimes of ours, he was persuaded to do what he did. It wasn't what he, God didn't hit him over a hammer and said, do it. He was persuaded to do it. In other words, he came through a thought process and an education of life to do what he did. Um, Roger. Yes, Martha. Um, <laughs> good morning. Good, the, good morning. <laughs> there's a note there for persuaded. It's convinced, which I also think makes a lot of sense. He yes. was convinced of them and embraced them. So yeah. Persuaded. No yeah, that, yeah, that's just as good a word, I think. Uh, to, uh, yeah. Truly believed it. Yeah. But to be convinced is to go through some kind of thought process. Oh yeah. It, Noah doesn't isn't there one day working in his garden and God suddenly taps him on the shoulder, "Hey buddy, I'm picking you for this job." He was already in a spiritual mode to take this on. He had gotten there somehow. Um, he saw something in the future and I'm sure beyond his lifetime, uh like we do, that he would be given um, we maybe don't think about that so much, um, but I'd come to think about it more. Persuaded is, or convinced, um, as Martha says, uh, is an especially important word when you think about it, because once you are persuaded of something, you have trouble seeing things in any other direction. We've all been persuaded of things, just like when we came into the truth. Once it clicked, this is it, and there's nothing else better that I will receive nothing better than to, to make this commitment to God. Then there's no turning back in your process and your thought process. And it would be very, very hard to re-persuade you otherwise. Um, many people that I've, well, not many, I'm, um, but many that have come to a knowledge of the truth and fallen away. It's been from what I've talked with in the past, have never stopped believing it. They've just chosen a different path uh, because they did not, could not apply it to their life or it was just too, maybe they couldn't deal with the trials or whatever the reason is. But they always have seemed to have been totally persuaded. And then there are a few who come and see it differently afterwards, but that has not been the normal. Um, because of it, he kept no ties to the world he lived in. Because he was persuaded, he didn't hang on to anything, nothing, not his property, not his anything, um, whatever it was that he owned. He obviously must have lived fairly well in order to get this ark built. I mean, he, he couldn't have been a pauper and built uh, something that's almost as big as, you know, or, uh, the Queen Mary. <laughs> Uh, in other words, he could not be persuaded to stop building the ark. And I would have no doubt that many people probably through the decades uh, maybe tried to talk him out of it because here he's building an ark in the middle of land, you know, and there were probably many conversations about, Noah, what are you doing? Think, man, think. It, it, what are you doing? You know, but he could not be persuaded to stop. Again, how much he understood, we don't know, but it was worth existing in a minority in a violent world uh, to be different. He lived in a world where he could have changed and been comfortable for the rest of his life and, and, and died, but he chose to live being in a minority in a violent world as one by one, the believers were dying off. You know, the, the we know that Methuselah meant that it would come. We talked about that. So as these people, one by one, were falling, falling asleep, he was becoming in a smaller and smaller minority until that day um, that the flood came. But he stayed focused. Anybody jump in here with anything if you say something. I'm just sort of going along with the, the things that have come into my mind as I've worked on this. Mm. Roger? Yes. Um, that is Sort of related, but unrelated. I'm just curious if anyone here has had the opportunity to go to the Ark Encounter that they have out in uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, we have. Uh, 
we have two. It's really kind of neat to see that in person. Maybe you've already talked about that. I came a little late, sorry, but um, but we, we had a chance to go there and it is pretty neat to get a visual, you know, again, I, we don't know how 100% real, you know, mm -hmm. accurate right. is or anything, but it does give you that sort of mental image of the, the work that would have had to have gone into this and the extent of this project. And it's just kind of a neat experience if you haven't been there yet. Yeah, we mentioned it last week because we've been there and it comes to life. It goes from being dimensions on a page to something that you can physically put your hand on. And um, it's, it's just amazing. It just is. If you can ever go, go. It's well worth it. Um, uh, we don't, it doesn't seem that Noah in any way suffered any violent abuse against him or anything. Of course, again, we don't know, but I'm sure he, he dealt with a lot of probably verbal abuse and, and uh, the things that, that would have come along in that time. Uh, it has to be if nobody came on the ship with him, they must have been many people laughing at him. He had to live in that environment where, um, you know, people were thinking poorly of him or a silly old man or, or something like that. And uh, we never know how many, many nights he went to sleep struggling with those thoughts that people were constantly putting in his head and staying focused. Now, it doesn't tell us that Noah was a flawless man by any means. Um, even though we, we know very little except for this hundred and um, uh, hundred year slot of his life and a little bit of time after. Uh, we know that he had fleshly weaknesses and we're only given a hint of that and to what extent it, it went we don't know but we know that uh, in Genesis 9 21 that he got drunk now and, and Lee and I had talked about this afterwards uh, that when we've been going through this you know I'd have to and after going and, and being at the ark encounter when you think about everything that was washed away how how would that affect you uh, emotionally, knowing that every person you ever knew on the earth was wiped out in a moment? It, there would be some probably difficult hours where, you know, you would want something to take the edge off of it or something. You know what I'm, without saying that he was an alcoholic, I'm just saying that he had a, a moment where he, he, he got drunk. Why he got drunk, we don't know. But the point is that we know that God doesn't really approve of that behavior, but it happened. And it's recorded to show that he was like us. He has weak moments. Um, but so that tells us that it's now he's now 600 plus years old. He was still a work in progress. 600 plus years. We're now at six or seven of our lifetimes. And he still struggles with his flesh or whatever. Uh, was going on in the family in that day. I'm sure there was a, everybody was struggling because they were the only ones on the planet at that time. And um, we could find that even at 600 years, we're, you can still be developing and learning and falling backwards and, and moving forwards. Um, so that that's inspiring to us because we only got 70 to 90 years <laughs> Uh, to work through this thing. He had 900 years to work through it. So, um, uh, yeah, well, go ahead, pick up. I was just talking to uh, one of our dentist clients this past week, and she was saying that, uh, you know, all during COVID, she was struggling so much uh, with her business and, and uh, all the extra things that they had to do and everything that she, you know, would grab a glass of wine each night, but that, you know, that glass of wine was turned into two and three glasses of wine. <laughs> Finally, she was just like, I got to stop drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's kind of how I felt, you know, back uh, last year in uh, March and April, I just, we were working so hard, you know, really all the way up until, you know, 10 p.m. every night, you know, and on the weekends, that I was just like, man, I could hardly get through the day without some kind of comfort. <laughs> <laughs> and 
you know, it's, it's even worse for um, others of our brothers and sisters. Uh, and we really appreciate Brother Paul being with us today. And um, of course, today is the day of uh, so Sophia's funeral today at one. And um, we just are so grateful for your faith, Brother Paul. Yes, we are, Paul. Before you tuned in today, we were we were talking about you and how our hearts are so heavy for you today, and you're definitely in our hearts and our prayers. Thank you, thank you all. It is. Um, I'm just uh, pray for give me strength. I'm going to try to do the eulogy, and um, I'm uh, I wanted to obviously get in the word with you guys, and um, you know, look forward to hearing a good exhortation today before we leave you know um but um just you know it's daunting task i tell you uh is you know so many friends and family but it's also going to be a wonderful task to um you know to witness to some to some brothers and sisters that i haven't seen in a while um and you know show them that that we we do that that i am convinced <laughs> that's a good word that, that um you know, that, uh, in my faith and, you know, the only way to show people that you truly are convinced is to show the fruits of the spirit. And, um, you know, um, hopefully, hopefully I'll be a good light for people to see, I guess, but, you know, it's, um, it, it's tough, you know, I can talk about it, but I, you know, certain things make you think about it. So, you know, it's um it's good that's why we need each other so much you know uh um, mm -hmm. you know we had the we had the visitation the family visitation and um you know we uh they my side my side of the family um were you know we we were telling stories and stuff and you can kind of get your mind off of it for a little bit you know um but uh, cause you don't want to be reminded, you know, so kind of getting in the word right now and is, you know, good for me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so it's the best thing for me, you know, God's word and, and God's brothers and sisters. That's, that's you guys. So thank you so much. You're welcome. We're here to carry you right now. Thank so. you. All right. Um, Okay. I would like to say some, one more thing, oh, yeah. Roger, if I could. I, I, I just, uh, um, I appreciate all the, um, my Christadelphian brothers and sisters from Canada to all over the U.S. have kind of reached out and, you know, and, and, uh, and not just, you know, send words and prayers, but they've also sent some support, you know, because uh, um baby violet's going to be on uh, she might have to be on auction till she's seven or eight years old we don't know that but she, right now she's doing well and you know every little gesture just kind of shows you that you know we are the body of christ and um i, I don't know if all y'all know that but i just wanted to say thank you if you know and uh it's, there's no way you can repay this because you know um There's nothing you can do, you know, but say thank you. Thank you, Paul, for being here. Okay. Um, get myself refocused here for a moment. Let's see. Um, there is a, a faith here with with Noah that was strong even though he fell and we have this one incident where he got drunk and it was showing that he was still a man of the that he was fleshly just like us um that he wasn't anywhere above us in any way or superior to us he was a man who had a lot of things that he had to deal with emotionally things that we can hardly even imagine dealing with but there is a faith here that was strong regardless of where they were in their personal growth. They're always growing. And we many times we fall back, but we fail forward is what we wanna do. 
Because if you fall out of weakness, that's one thing. The Lord's always there to pick us up um, with whatever we're going through. But if you fall out of rebellion, that's totally different. Uh, uh, and that's what the people in Noah's day did. They fell out of rebellion. They would not listen to Noah no matter what. And there had been more than just Noah there. As we talked about, the believers were dying off. But God was not a foreign concept to the world in that day. Um, no telling Methuselah had a thousand years to preach, and he probably did. But as, as weak as we are, uh, it's, it's okay, because you're going, God expects that, and he doesn't think any less of you because you fall, unless you fall out of re absolute rebellion against him, and then that's a different class, like we saw with uh, Cor, Dathan, and Abiram. They were uh, that was absolute rebellion, and they they were dealt with immediately. But Aaron, you know, made a golden calf <laughs> for Israel, but the earth didn't swallow him up. That's because he fell in weakness. There's a big difference there, a contrast. To these men lived at the same time, and look at the different rack. Now, Aaron suffered for it with all he had to go through with explaining himself to Moses and to God, and who knows what else he, he lived with from that forward, knowing that he had taken them down that path. But we know that was out of weakness. And as I had mentioned before, when I was younger, uh, I had personally judged people lost when I was younger because I saw them behaving badly and that when simply they were just falling in a period of time. And that time might last a decade where they, they fall away. But next thing you know, they, they show up again. And uh, why? Because they needed to take that journey. It was required of them so that they could work through the issues that were weak in them. Um, and God is very patient. And we, we find that in, if I got, let's see what kind of time, we have just enough time to read this. Go to 1 Peter 3, uh, 13 through 20. I about lost my screen, here we go. Let's see, who, who's next? Uh, Kathy, you're next on my screen. Would you read 1 Peter 3, 13 through 20? And it's interesting uh, for you read that Noah is mentioned here. Keep that in mind. This is another place where Noah comes into the picture. Okay, 1 Peter 3, 13 through 20. Yeah. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Uh one thing that jumped out of here that of the last component of Noah's faith that was mentioned about condemning the world uh, in verse 16, it says that they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation. And you can imagine the people banging on the door of the ark that terrible day who were ashamed <laughs> of the, how much they did not believe even with Noah's all Noah's good conversation to save them. Um, and uh, we may have had times like that where people came back and they said, I know you're a religious person and it's very difficult. I'm sorry for what I said, because I know you fear God in, in some capacity. But um, what I wanted to look at here uh, was uh, this last verse, verse, or at least the whole thing, really. In these verses, we find that uh, it talks about suffering for righteousness, ready to give an answer, and having a good conscience. 
And I would suggest to you, and then Noah is mentioned at this time. I, I would suggest to you that this is the character of Noah, that he suffered for righteousness in many ways uh, that he can tell us about, but uh, I don't think it was a, a, an easy ride for him I mean, in any way. It wouldn't be an easy ride for any of us if we were building a boat in our backyard like this. You know, you would become the talk of the town. You'd be on the news and everything else and people just laughing all the time. But he was always ready to give an answer of what, what was going to take place. I'm sure that he told him many times, God's going to destroy the earth. Repent, repent, repent. And he had a good conscience about what he was doing. Uh, but God gave the world around them plenty of time to react, to, to free them from this spiritual prison, as it says in verse 19, what Christ did, which also went out and preached the spirits in prison. Now, that's not in literal prison, but they were prisoners of their sin. And he to, to free them from that. Uh, now, Noah built the ark because, and this is sort of a conclusion to this, not to belabor the point, but Noah built the ark because he believed that the flood would come, as we talked about. He believed God would do what he said he would and acted on it for possibly, possibly up to 120 years. We know that God decided man's days are 120 years. Now, we don't know when he commissioned him, but he could have commissioned him that same day. We don't know. He might have been 50 years later he did. We don't know. Um, but if it was for 120 years, that's two of our lifetimes, that over two of our lifetimes almost, um, that God, not that Noah was faithful in this one task, 120 years. The diligence there is enormous uh, of what he took on uh, and to accomplish it. Uh, of course, God helped him by bringing the animals to them and, and things like that. I'm sure God had some certain things that he did to make it sure that it happened, whether he gave him labor to help build the boat or whatever, we don't know. But imagine being focused on one task for 120 years. That is an enormous uh, uh, focus on the being an heir to whatever God had promised. And I would suggest to you that this, again, was written for our learning, that we stay focused upon whatever task God gives us, whether it lasts five minutes or, or five years or whatever, is to never lose focus, no matter what's going on around you, uh, to accept Christ and stay the course. For uh, we know that there is another day of judgment coming uh, on this earth. And Christ is the ark that he's, he's mentioned as the ark and it's right there. We don't want to find ourselves beating on the door one day when after it's shut. And that is so important about what this story was trying to tell us and, and Noah's faith. Um, we're coming up. We have two minutes left. Uh, I'm certainly not going to try to open Abraham up. Uh, he's next, but does anybody have anything they'd like to add or, things about the story that are intriguing to you? I, I would like to add one thing. Yes, ma'am. Um, when you look at comparing the time it took to build the ark, um, many cathedrals across Europe took 250 to 300 years. Now that's oh, not wow. ancient time, so they had better tools. But if you think of something lasting that long, because sometimes it sounds like, wow, that's a long time to build something. But um, in more recent times, they spent that long doing things like that so yeah, yeah that's a good uh yeah. that's good input martha because i was thinking the same <laughs> thing like 120 years why did it take so long <laughs> so even like the national cathedral i think that was almost 100 years so, mm -hmm. anyway. you wonder what Mo noah thought did he think lord this is going to take 120 years to build you know if you had that in your mind maybe he didn't know how long it would take he just set his hands to the chisel or and cutting that first tree down you know uh They're interesting no idea. Huh? another interesting point from the ark encounter was that there was room for more people yeah, plenty of room god was saying no we can't take any more you know there was room for more people if, if they had decided they wanted to go 
but yeah that's what peter that god was long suffering he was waiting for those people to repent um and they wouldn't um but he had allowed room for a lot of people to to could have yeah. survived thing, but uh there wasn't and he's allowed yeah. he's being long suffering to us in our lives whatever lifetime he gives us he's being long suffering for us to come to him and to set our hand to that plow and to take on whatever task he has for us and uh and not lose focus and uh, i would say that's our our lesson for the day um about noah and uh it's been extremely enjoyable to to learn these things even at my age you know mm -hmm. about him that i had never considered before so thank you uh, you're welcome and uh, yeah i have us out of time my alarm just went off so i look forward to seeing some of y'all at meeting in a little while and for the rest of you you have a wonderful day and and paul we're all with you and irma our prayers are with you and our hearts are with you thank you guys love you love you all love you see everybody home. on the video <laughs> bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.